Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, I've got with me the man with the plan, the man of the hour, the owner, the operator of the Impact Lounge, the man who makes two-for-one drink specials of cranberry and vodka at the Impact Lounge, but only when we're all out of vodka. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for BQ. (laughs) I like cranberry vodka. I'm more of a pineapple vodka and pineapple and vodka. I'm sorry, not pineapple vodka, but... Oh, pi- pineapple and vodka. Okay, yeah. nice, nice, Kinda. nice. I used to be a, a a a Malibu Bay Breeze guy. The yeah. uh the 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 what's that? The uh pineapple rum. Uh-huh. And uh a little I think a little cranberry juice in there. It's good. It's good. <laughs> that was like my um my my onboarding to drinking. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Starter piece. <laughs> Um, real quick before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and hit that like button. Okay. I need to see the likes on this video get way, 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 way up. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. So you are subscribed to this channel and hit the su- notification bell. So that you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. Um, it's Sunday night, probably Monday morning by the time you hear this. And we are coming off of impacts spring pay-per-view spectacular rebellion and we're going to get into it we're going to chop it up we're going to talk about what we like we're going to talk about what we didn't like we're going to give you some results and we're going to spin it forward a little bit and see where we think some of these things are going bq you ready to dive into this show i am ready all right so let's get to it um the show kicked off on the countdown show with eddie edwards versus chris bay um of course you know you get these two and you're gonna have a good match you know it was real back and forth eddie edwards won with a tiger driver followed by the diehard driver to get the pin on chris bay of course chris bay was filling in for jonathan gresham who i believe was out with a concussion uh what'd you think of eddie edwards getting the pre-show win over chris bay here well, first, I want to say about Rebellion in general, there was a great crowd. This was probably the largest crowd we've seen at Impact Show in a while, probably since Bound for Glory uh, uh, in Chicago. And I think this was more. This looked like it, it, was, it was more. It sounded like there was more. But a uh, nice, nice large crowd, for the most part, very engaged. We'll talk about when they weren't. Um, the, just the overall presentation of the show was nice, crisp, and clear, and it just... It, it, it looked good, sounded good, and uh, usually when it looks good and sounds good, I usually tend to enjoy the majority of it. So as far as Eddie Edwards and uh, Jonathan Gresham, or well, I mean, that was the initial match. I'm kind of glad it didn't happen because I don't know who the hell you were going to book to win. I don't think it was a ROH title match, though, was it? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I am not sure. I was under the impression it was, but then I then they kind of pitched it like it wasn't, so... Um, if it was, there was no way Eddie was going to lose because Tony Khan's not going to have two impact people as his <laughs> champions. Right. Um, I guarantee he's trying to get that title off Deanna ASAP, you know? So, um, but this is what we got instead. I don't like seeing Chris Bay lose, you know, it's like ever since he joined the bullet club, he's got a couple wins here and there, but you know, for the most part, it's like the same you know, him taking a lot of falls. So the match was, was entertaining. Um, I, w- I want to say about Eddie Edwards, though, I wish he would do more to change up his look now that his gimmick has changed. I'm surprised he doesn't have the... Man, when he had the braids and shit before that looked absolutely ridiculous, he should have that as a heel, not now. I right. mean, not... <laughs> right. yeah, I agree. Then. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, he thought that looked cool. Yeah, yeah, dude. And it, it looked awful. And... You know, he's wearing a shirt that is like, it's been one of his pro wrestling t-shirts for, I mean, before I started doing this, the Impact Lounge. So we're talking <clears throat> six years, man. Uh, he still rocks a lot of his like real old shirts. And I'm just like, why? Is, is, there, is there not a new Eddie Edwards shirt of Sean Pitback now that he's Honor No More? I know there's I mean, Honor No More shirts, but I just. You would hope, right? He's, he's yeah. been wearing that Honor No More shirt a lot. So I've seen him wear the, the Honor No More shirt okay. a lot. So, 
Is he, dude, is he getting sneaky fat? Like, why does he wear a shirt? Is he getting sneaky fat? Eddie Edwards, is he getting sneaky fat? What have you been watching for the past three years? I say <laughs> sneaky because it's not like he's, he doesn't have like this huge gut or anything, but I mean. You said, why is he wearing it? You, you, you just need to close your eyes and think back to the Wolves, Eddie Edwards. You need to close your eyes and think back to the Eddie Edwards that beat Lashley for the championship. And then open your eyes and look at this Eddie <laughs> Edwards, okay? There, there, there's got to be 50, 60 pounds difference. Got to be. Damn, that's a lot. Got to be, man. I'm telling you, like, it's significant. And I honestly, I think that um, I think that at, Re- at Rebellion, he looked a little more fit. You know what I mean? He looked yeah. a little more fit. And I thought that was actually cool because, I, you know, like, listen, I don't, I'm not into body shaming, even though, you know, wrestling is a cosmetic business, like whatever, yada, 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 yada. But like, I want to see these guys, you know, like get their full potential. You know what I mean? So like, so I want to see Eddie Edwards and all wrestlers. I want to see them all healthy. You know what I mean? I want to see them performing at the top level dog, by the way, speaking of which Deanna Perrazzo busted out a moonsault last night that had me like, yo, (laughs) <laughs> I did not see that coming, man. I did not see that coming. So sometimes, listen, man, sometimes don't 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 let the fat fool you, okay? Sometimes people are in better shape than they look, okay? Right, absolutely. Um, yeah, actually, Cornette, I was just listening to Cornette on the way to work this morning. He was talking about Yokozuna. Uh, we're getting so off topic here, but he was like, <laughs> he was he was in shape for what he did. Right. You, you know, like there was a lot that he you know, use a lot of energy for. So um, but we're not going to, we're not going to get into that. But as far as this match goes, it, it was a good opener. I think a lot of people were disappointed. Jonathan Gresham wasn't the appo- opponent. I kind of preferred this. Uh, I, I just was disappointed that, you know, Chris Bay took a loss. And um, I, I noticed from this pay-per-view, because Bullet Club obviously is involved three times, Impact is fully embracing the cool heel thing. Um, mm. I hate cool heels. Like, with passion uh, Chris Bay I, I tend to like more than the other Bullet Club guys mm-hmm. but as far as like the Bullet Club I freaking hate the Bullet Club and I always have right you know playing up to the crowd and getting the chant with you and man um, you know maybe I'll get into that a little bit more in a tag team match but they're fully embracing the cool heel thing and they're embracing the tweener thing so that there's been many matches over the last like two months that have been heel versus heel right and in some cases, you don't really know if someone we're supposed to treat someone like the baby face or not, like PCO versus Jonah. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like what what do you want us to do? What who are you yeah. trying to get us to root for and boo? You know. Right. But this mm-hmm. was another weird like heel versus heel match. But yeah, um, it, it was yeah. a good opener. The the the, the pay per view overall. Let me just get this out of the way. Mm-hmm. I kind of give like a middle B. Okay. Um, the first half was good. The second half, minus the main event, was not. Um, so this this usually is my least favorite of the four pay-per-views. Mm. It, it was better than I thought it was going to be because the storylines I thought freaking sucked outside of the main event. But um, I was pretty pleased up until a certain point, though. So th- this was a cool way to, to kick it off, though. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. This was a great way to kick off the show. Um, I got to say, though, like, and, and this, this was a little bit of a theme for me throughout the evening. From a storytelling perspective, it just made me, it was it was curious as to why go with Eddie Edwards over Chris Bay. Now, you can easily say Eddie Edwards is currently a part of a more important storyline than Chris Bay is. Like, I think Honor No More exists to be a heel army for Josh Alexander, okay? Like, I think they're, they're, they're there to be, you know, like his main thing that, that he's going through, right? Mm-hmm. Um, cause you heard when Eddie Edwards cut that promo, when he was, you know, his why Eddie, why promo, he talked about how he didn't like that Josh Alexander got the shot to bring back the impact title when he felt like it should have been him. Right. So that was his whole motivation. And so that tells me that like, you know, this is, this is, this is what they're here for is to, you know, be a foil to Josh Alexander. And I'm like, all right, so cool. I get that. That's a more important storyline. But, 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 but. <laughs> the problem with Impact Wrestling to me, a major problem with Impact Wrestling is that 
Impact needs to get younger as far as the fan base goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like the, you know, like you said it, like, you know, they had, you know, they, they had 500 people, you know, in the, um, in the building out there in Poughkeepsie and it was cool, but like, you know, I think a big part of the reason why this crowd can sound so up and down sometimes is because it's full of 40 year old people. Like <laughs> we ain't got but so much energy <laughs> to right. be out there. You know what I mean? Like we're not going to be up for a whole show. Like, you know, we're going to, we're going to give you, you know, some, some good energy in spots, but we're not the, you know, the, the, the 18 to 39s who are going to be out there cheering every single person and making up dumb chants and like all of that stuff. I think that, that, you know, this is a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a sidebar, but I'm just saying that like, I think Chris Bay should be like a feature player in impact. Like he has a cool factor that nobody else on this roster has. Like Chris Bay is the coolest person by far, as far as like, you know, if you put all these people, if you put all these characters, right? Like, I don't know Chris Bay, the human, the, the citizen, right? But, but as a character, Chris Bay is cool on a level that nobody else is, right? So like, he should be like a hood ornament for the show. And right. you should be building around him. Plus he's a part of the Bullet Club. Like, you know, it's 2022 Bullet Club ain't what it was in terms of like coolness, but it's cooler than honor no more, right? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, so I just, I don't know, man. I, I'm like, where are you going? Like, what's your priorities? I, I, I get it now. I, now that the whole show has played out and I think I have an idea of where things are pro- probably going. But I don't know. I just think they should be doing more Chris Bay. Like you said, I didn't really like the idea of Chris Bay losing here because I just think, you know, who knows how much time they're going to have Chris Bay for. But, you know, I've said, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, he's a super duper star, man. And they're not maximizing, you know, what they have in Chris Bay. All right. So we got the uh, Knockouts World Tag Team Champions, the Influence, taking on the Inspiration, Cassie Lee and Jesse McKay for the Knockouts World Tag Team Championship. And this match was better than it had any right to be. Yeah. This was a good match, man. This was a good match. Um, the match ended, you know, the to, to Neil Dashwood hit the spotlight kick on Cassie Lee. She got a, she got a two count. Then Cassie Lee hit Tanil Dashwood with her spin kick. Um, and then the influence countered the idolizer into the collab to retain the knockouts world tag team titles. Like I said, this match was better. Than, if you were to say what match you think would be the weakest, this would have to be a contender for just looking at a paper, what match you thought would be the weakest. And this was probably one of the better matches of the night. This was good. I enjoyed this. This wasn't like, this wasn't in the top three, but it was good. This was way more entertaining, way more fun than I expected. So that was a, uh, what did you think of this match? I actually, enjoy, I enjoyed it as well. I like both the teams a lot. So, you know, that, that obviously helps for me anytime I watch a match, but uh, I enjoyed it. And what the difference was between this and their other stuff is they didn't have the shenanigans of Caleb on the outside. Yeah, and yeah. that's what, Rest in, peace. in my opinion, hurt everything. Every, every time they had a match, whether it was one on one, two on two, like it was always some nonsense outside of the ring with him. And yeah. I don't know why they let him go. Or, you know, it, it didn't bring him back. He was this. This storyline feels feels like it's been going on for six years, and we went through all that just to write him off TV. Like, and then the, the way they fired him was like, he helped them win a match. So, I, I don't know. It it was just silly. Uh, it. it, it it kind of bothered me because I'm like, man, I've been watching this storyline and you know play out for that how long, and that's your payoff. Yeah, I oh. think he was upset he didn't get a birthday tweet from Impact, and he must be what... about it. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta be what it was. You guys so, are the worst, actually. <laughs> bro, yeah, they'll bring them back when they need suicide, man. So, um, oh, man. but no, it, it it was good. Um, I I kind of wonder what's next for both of these teams, though. Mm-hmm. Uh. I was thinking, I'm just strictly like fantasy booking. Uh, I've mentioned this before. The allure would be really cool to bring on a feud with one of these teams. I know Angelina loves doing uh, the next NWA tapings, but that, that doesn't mean shit. I mean, um, I really think Mandy Leone's one of the people that when I first saw her wrestle, I was like, this is a star, you know? Mm-hmm. And I I feel like I have a good a good eye for female talent. 
because mm-hmm. there's I've only ever said prior to you know as far as a women women being on the indies I've only ever said three times yo this person's gonna be a star it was a uh, Gigi Dolan uh, Britt Baker and um, I think Tessa Blanchard might have been the other one so oh, I, I mean I feel like I have a pretty good it's pretty good track record right yeah, there you know what I mean um, now Mandy Leon I didn't see her on the indies I saw her in Ring of Honor so it doesn't really qualify but She's someone I always think is like, dude, there's so much star power there. So I think the allure would be really cool to bring on. Um, and it might be a good opportunity to, to bring the Hex on, uh, Allison Kay and Marty Bell. I would love to see them. I think Allison Kay has like so much personality. And I think that like um, when she was originally in Impact, you know, like they pre- presented Sienna as like this tough, girl but like i and and she and and i thought she would do a lot with her camera time with her mic time with her promo time but i didn't think they really defined her character and i think that like now you know through her vehicles you know the way she's promoted herself on you know social media and 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 just you know all of her stuff that she's doing i think people will have a much better feel for allison k you know, just like as a personality, as a character, when they see her on the screen. Um, and I, I think she I think she would have a great run if she came back to Impact, just because people are much more familiar with, you know, who she is, um, you know, what what to expect from, you know, her, her, her personality, her sense of humor, like all of the stuff that she does that she brings to the table. And I think, I don't know, man, I, just, I think I think all parties would stand to benefit. You know what I mean? Like it'd be, um, you know, a, 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 a more high profile show than, you know, the NWA that they're on right now. Um, the impact could definitely use, you know, a good quality tag team. And again, like, I just, I think she's just, she's one of those people that just does great work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like the, you know, you know, the promos are going to be good, you know, give her some creative freedom to do some stuff she wants to do to try some stuff. And I listen, I, to me, it's there. It's right there. You know, that that should be. I think they would be at the top of the list. You mentioned the allure, yeah. but the I would go with the hex first things first. I would definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Them. I actually just saw them a week ago, Allison and uh, Marty. So uh, I should I should ask them. Oh, like like a like a Cracker Barrel or just uh... <laughs> no at a uh, convention. Mm. But I know uh, them, I know them both. So what's that? Oh, cool. Nice. Um, all right, so the the first match on the actual pay per view was Jay White versus Steve Macklin versus Chris Saban, and your boy Steve Macklin bagged them and tagged them, uh, and he got the 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 win here. I actually there was a spot here that I loved. There was a oh my god, but how did it do? You know what Macklin does the thing where he runs in to like spear somebody that's already like stuck in the corner. He did that and missed and went flying out of the ring. Oh my and god! And like under the announce table, I was like, "Dog, that was yo, that was, that was crazy." But there were some good spots in this match, and the way that the way that it that that it ended, Chris Saban hit the cradle shock on Jay White, but then Steve Macklin just kind of snuck in and you know curled him up from the back. Um, I thought that was good. To me, that's a finish that kind of like protects everybody, right? Like. You didn't have Steve Macklin, like, destroying these people, but he still got the win. It was a huge win for him. It was an establishing win for him. It was a heelish win for him. And I was like, man, this is good. That To me, that's quality booking, right? <clears throat> Nobody comes out of this looking worse. Everybody comes out of this looking mm-hmm. strong. Everybody had a good performance. And you also helped elevate somebody. Like, to me, this is what a match is all about. My only issue with, and I, I've already talked about this, was why did we even have this match as far as, I just can't remember outside of a video game having a triple threat match with no stakes. Like you just don't like when you're playing a video game, oh, triple threat, cool. But like in real mm-hmm. wrestling, you're not just like, hey, these three people are gonna fight. Right. Like right. usually there's something. You're fighting for something. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of bothered me when we threw this together because when they do that for a pay per view, my mind already starts going to they're just trying to throw a bunch of people on the show. Yeah. So I wasn't initially like, oh, can't wait to see how, you know, this match. But, yeah. um, but it was, I, I really liked it. And when he went for the crosshairs and went flying, dude, he went flying. I mean, that was bananas the way he did that. 
and I thought it was a really good finish. I thought it was a creative finish because they could have written him out of the match there. I thought they did. I thought that was his, like, he's done for. Yeah. And usually what we see in a triple threat is someone hits a finisher. Um, this Blade Runner finisher, man, it's same finish. You know, I'm always talking about people having the same finishers, dude. Like, same finisher Alex Shelley has, and then you can go to any other wrestling show, and someone's doing that freaking move, man. Like, that move does nothing for me. Anyway, um, so Saban, usually what happens in a triple threat, one guy hits the finisher, and then you throw that guy out of the ring, and you pin the guy who's down. But they did this differently, where Saban hits the finisher on Jay White, and then Macklin comes up and rolls up Saban. And as you said, everyone left looking okay. No one, you know, like you said, it was a defining win for Macklin. Like, I wrote here in my notes, like, he... I think I wrote those exact words. He needed a defining win because they were building him as this, you know, never been tapped, uh, never, been pinned, never been pinned, never been submitted guy. And then all of a sudden he lost like three matches in a row. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, yo, what, what's going on here? So, um, this was good. I, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot more than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was definitely good. I enjoyed it. I thought it was one of those things, like I said, good, Good for everybody. All parties involved came out of it looking good. Um, all right. Up next, we had the Triple A Reina Duranas champion and ROH Women's Champion Deanna Perrazzo with her champ champ challenge against Taya Valkyrie for the Triple A Reina Duranas championship. Taya Valkyrie made her impact in ring return as she battled Deanna Perrazzo for the title, the title that she never lost, the AAA Reina Duranas Championship. And uh, Tom Hannafin actually referred to that on commentary, you know, that Taya Valkyrie vacated that title to pursue other opportunities. And mm -hmm. um, Taya Valkyrie hit a running crossbody, followed by a drop kick to gain the early advantage. Valkyrie hit her signature snap German suplex off the ropes. Perrazzo brings her momentum to a halt as she begins to wear Valkyrie down in the middle of the ring. Perrazzo locks in the Koji clutch, but Valkyrie counters into a pinning predicament for two. Perrazzo sends her back first into the apron with a modified leg sweep. Perrazzo avoids the road to Valhalla and follows up with a standing moonsault. I saw that. I was like, dog, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Perrazzo launched herself off the top, but Valkyrie counters into a mid-air powerbomb. Valkyrie successfully hits the road to Valhalla to dethrone the champ champ and become the new triple A, triple A, ah, Reina yeah. Duranas champion, champion, uh, Taya with the win. What, what, what'd you think about this here? It felt right seeing Taya in an impact ring. Now the website added her to the roster and then they took her down. So I don't know what's going on with that the wording here right was it was a little confusing right like i feel like they've been talking about her they've been saying her return her right? yeah she's back yeah a lot of saying that and i'm like man they're really making this sound like she's like here to stay and i just don't feel like that's the case it doesn't feel that way no um i don't like her new song dude i thought her previous theme was one yeah, of the yeah, best yeah. yep and she used it at the uh at the multiverse Mm -hmm. One of the best theme songs in the company. Yep. And I don't like a lot of Impact theme songs. I think uh, the majority of them are not good. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that one I thought was really, really good. And then mm -hmm. whatever she came out to, it was not the same. Like, it just didn't. You know what probably happened? And I'm guessing, I, I, I don't, um, I'd have to go back and, like, check the, ch fact check this. But I thought I heard the guy, um, oh, what's his brother's name? I think his name is Josiah and... Um, he's a guy, he was, he was working for NXT. He's a rapper. Um, and he, um, he has, um, I think a YouTube page called like hustle and flow and, um, it's or, original. Yeah, no, no, no. Maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> Is wrestling flow, something like that. I don't gotta know. be like yeah, hustling flow is the movie, but, um, yeah, but, um, anyway, so like, so he, he raps and he, but he does like wrestling theme songs. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I heard his voice on that theme song that she came out to. And that might have been her NXT theme music. I'm not sure. But probably, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's a hot commodity. So he's probably charging a pretty penny for theme songs. And so she, if she got this theme music made 
you know, for NXT, then she probably wants to keep using it because she spent the money on it. You know what I mean? Trying Fair to get enough. some value out of it. So that that that's the only answer I can think of. I'd have to go back and watch some of those episodes of NXT that she was on to see if that's actually the case. Um, but like sidebar, they did they did her so dirty in NXT, man. They did her so dirty. Like she just never had a chance. It's just it's it sucks for her, and she took it really hard based on you know right. what she posted on social media. Um, she took it really hard and I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. Like, you know, I, she's, she's from California, I believe. And, you know, I she think lives she said, there, but she's from Canada. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. But she was, yeah, I think she's like really upset. I think she's talking about like moving, you know, moving to Florida for NXT. And then, you know, like seemingly, you know, no sooner than she got there, you know, they turned around and fired her and like, it just was really completely out of her control. And that just, you know, I don't know. This is one of those things that sucks. You, you took a chance. You bet on yourself. You can never be mad at somebody for doing that. But um, right. she got a raw deal just because, you know, in terms of, and I said this when she first went to WWE, I, I didn't like her chances of becoming a feature player in WWE just because, you know, there's like, there's a look thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the Mandy Rose She's not an awful wrestler, but she's also not good. And right. they give her each and every chance to succeed. Like they've placed her as the, the lead villain on NXT. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, uh, so you know, like this, it, it, WWE, for, for women especially, no matter how talented you are, like I think that, you know, the looks play a big part into it. And, you know, I think like, as much as they say they've evolved, like, you know, looking like a model goes a long way in WWE. You know what I mean? I was going to say, and, she's uh, hot. What are you talking about? But you mean yeah. uh, your standard, no, no, no. like. I think, I think, I mean, I think, I think a lot of it is, is her body type. Like, I think Ty is a good looking woman. You know what I mean? But, but I think, but I could totally see how she doesn't fit again that Mandy Rose, Alexa yeah, yeah, yeah. Bliss, Lacey Evans, you know what I mean? Like, think about, like, I was having this conversation with some people the other night. We were we were talking about uh, how they're trying to repackage Lacey Evans. And are you familiar with Lacey Evans? The, oh, I love Lacey. I love Lacey. Oh, okay, all right. I watched, so we, I actually saw the repackaging. Yes, yes. So I, so I was talking with some people about how they're trying to repackage Lacey Evans right now, and, and some people hate it. Some people yeah. absolutely hate it. And I thought that was funny because I'm like, yo, I'm totally into this. Like the, you know, because I was following like her social media, you know, watching her like, you know, get herself back in shape after having her baby. And, you know, she tweets about like, you know, her 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 husband and being a mom. I'm like, oh yeah, who, who can't get behind this? And so anyway, you know, like I was, I was a fan of the repackaging because I became a fan of her like off TV, right? But like a lot of people were not a fan of the repackaging. And I was telling people, I was like, yo, look, like, if y'all don't like this, this is fine, but y'all better get used to it because whether you like it or not, they're going to keep repackaging her. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> she's pretty, she's blonde, she's got, you know, big boobs. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, that's the WWE look. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. want to, they're going to, it doesn't matter if this don't work, she'll be back in another, in another uh, capacity. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> so, right. And where like, Ty is like, she's tall, right. she's muscular. Mm hmm right exactly like she she she's athletic the character piece is dope like if you just give her a chance you know what i mean like it might not look like it might not look like uh alexa bliss but it's a hundred times better than alexa bliss in every possible way you know what i'm saying <laughs> so um so anyway i i thought she was doomed in nxt just for that reason um but um but yeah i you know Look, you know, it is what it is. So I'd love to see her be back in Impact for real, for real, but I don't think she is. Yeah, I got that vibe like when EC3 was back and we're like, he doesn't feel back. Right. So, you know, maybe she'll do a set of tapings. I haven't heard those rumors, but I, I don't get the impression she's back. So um, this uh, match was better than the last time they wrestled because there was a heel-face dynamic yes. where last time it was heel versus heel. You, you know what I mean? So Also... Also, at the end of Taya's run, I was very disappointed, um, not with her, but with the presentation of her. Um, remember, she was coming off that, you know, really long reign as champion. And then, you know, I talked about how excited I was when we looked up and it was like, bam, all of a sudden we got Jordan Grace, Deanna Perrazzo, uh, Kylie Ray, 
um, uh, Taya Valkyrie. And I was just like, yo, like, holy crap. Like, this division is about to beat the shit out of each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and, they, and they just didn't do it like that. They just didn't do it like that. And, you know, by the time that uh, Taya had her match with Deanna Perrazzo, it was one of those things where, like, plus it was, you know, it was the pandemic. And, you know, they were doing all the empty arena wrestling. And, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying that anybody was phoning it in, but it just wasn't done d- justice. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, they didn't build it properly. You know, a match like that, by the time we see Taya and Deanna in a ring, it should be a situation where we've both seen them just kicking everybody's ass uh, up until this point. And so you're like, who's going to win, right? Yeah. Um, much like this match was, right? There should be that genuine anticipation uh over who's gonna win and so that that just wasn't the case then like at that point you knew diana perrazzo was gonna come up and you knew taya was you know uh, plateauing at best on the way out you know at 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 worst so you know it wasn't even close the build wasn't even close i knew it was clear taya was gonna win this match though like i just knew that's what was gonna happen well, I mean, yeah, just, just thinking about it from the standpoint of, like, that AAA title, like, there wasn't a whole lot of names based on the run that Deanna Prazo was on, right? There wasn't a whole lot of names that would seem credible for taking that off of her. Um, obviously, somebody had to take it off of her, but, yeah, you know, I don't know. There, there just didn't, there wasn't a whole lot of names that seemed, like, credible for really, like, taking that off of her. And, right, like, Taya seemed perfect. She seemed perfect. She seemed to have, like, that perfect mix of like cachet and she's also recognizable to the impact audience and it felt like the right thing to do now this let's spin it forward a little bit where do you see diana going next do you think she's gonna like spiral out of you know like because they got to get that roh title off of her too you know what i mean and i've been looking at her with the roh women's championship and thinking to myself, like, please just don't go lose to fucking Britt Baker, please. Yeah, because, that would suck. Like, like I, I just, I just think that would suck because, while yeah, a lot of people want to see this match, the problem is, it's like the champ champ run is coming to an end. Okay, cool. The champ champ story is coming to an end. It's 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 over now. So like, what does that mean? Do you just go into like? You know, she's going to go on a losing streak. Like, you know, I, I don't, I think that with a proper build, a Deanna Perrazzo Britt Baker match could be a huge deal. But like, as an Impact fan, right? Like, Impact just takes the, the short end of the stick from um, Tony Khan every single time. And mm-hmm. so, like, Deanna Perrazzo is one of the few Impact properties that has been uh, built up really well. And so, like, I just would hate her to see just, I hate to see her just taking the L for, you know, AEW's, you know, B property, um, you know, like, just in in some some sort of, like, you know, undeserving type of way, that some way that's, like, unbecoming of the run that Deanna Perrazzo has had as the ROH women's champ. Because Tony Khan has made it clear his people are not going to lose to people from other companies. Right. Uh, They keep bringing in, you know, they're doing the forbidden door thing. They keep bringing in all these Japanese talent. Those guys have never won. The guys that they bring in, they don't beat anybody. They they bring in as a special attraction, attraction and they lose. You know, I mean, we saw he wouldn't even uh, pin private party with impact. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I, do I just... More, do you think that's more Tony Khan or do you think that's more Scott Demore? just trying to be very giving, trying to be like a, a, a bridge builder. I wouldn't like, be think, surprised if it's Tony both. Khan is, is like, you're not beating any of my people. I or fully you believe Scott so. Demore is more like, Scott Demore is more like, um, oh, we're going to take good care of your people. I think it's both, both equally. I don't think it's one more than the other. I think it's, yeah. uh, those are both spot on. Right. They're both on the same page. Yes. That AW. <laughs> AEW <laughs> should be held in much higher regard than them. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's funny. All right, here we go. Let's get back to the show. Um. All right. So next up, we had 
Cla- the classic. We had, yes, we had X Division champion Trey Miguel versus Mike Bailey versus Ace Austin for the X Division championship. One thing I loved about this uh, match when it started, when um, when Trey Miguel came out, I like how he gave the little nod to his boys, yeah, the rascals. I was like, man, I thought that was really you know interesting, just because it was one of those things like we know what it is. Like we know, you know, there's there's like real life things going on. And listen, I'm not going to, you know, speak on the um, I'm not going to, you know, really just dive in too much to the, the whole domestic violence thing. But like, I will say this, I'll say that, like. As. As I, I, I understand, um, I understand, like Trey Miguel just trying to say, hey, man, like you know, like I'm, 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 I'm feeling for you, you know, with, with what you're experiencing right now. You know what I mean? Like, that's not to say that he, you know, was complicit or enabling or anything or victim blaming or anything. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying, I like to see that little nod to like, Hey, you know what I mean? Like, just, just, just know I'm with you. I mean, and listen, these guys are like real, you know, real friends in real life, I think. So, you know, I'm sure that they've had real conversations, but I just thought it was really cool just to do that little acknowledgement on air. Yeah. And by the way, you know, maybe that wasn't necessarily for, uh, for Nash Carter. Maybe it was more for Desmond Xavier, because what is to become of him in WWE? You know, like yeah. as, a, as a tag team wrestler, when your uh your partner gets fired you know unceremoniously you know that never works out yeah unspeakable reasons like you know unless you're the one that they saw the talent in to begin with it's probably not gonna end well for you so um so you know that that could be one of those things and and you know he could be really going through he could be really worried so anyway all that i thought just to say like i thought it was really cool to see that little acknowledgement you know what i mean just knowing that you know, he was just trying to give a shout out to his boys. Um, also, I hope Kimberly is in a good space mentally and physically and doing OK. Um, I, I just I, I, yeah. I really hope the two of them are just in a good space because, you know, we won't get too much of a rant here, but. I'm not discounting that if something happened to her, it's horrible. That's not what I'm saying at all. But toxic relationships make people do crazy things. Mm-hmm. But toxic relationships mean that there's equal craziness on both sides or there's mm-hmm. such a or maybe one person is a good person. The other one is so crazy mm-hmm. that you meet somewhere in the middle and mm-hmm. sometimes the good person acts out of, you know, like I, I had, yeah, a, I, had yeah, a, yeah. I had a buddy one time, man, nicest guy in the world, got with a crazy girl, man. And she just pushed his buttons, pushed his yeah. buttons. I mean, broke his shit. Mm-hmm. Um talk shit about his family, his mm-hmm. kids, you know, I mean, just, and the the dude was real calm and he just yeah, took yeah. it. And then finally one day, like just, and mm-hmm. he, he told me, he's like, dude, I, I didn't know what, like she pushed me to this point. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That I, I, I had no control yeah, over myself, you know? And yeah. um, then he had to go through a lot yeah, to yeah. rehabilitate himself I'm because sure. now you, he, you look, you know, it takes that yeah. person to tell one person. Now he's just like, yeah. Uh, well, like, you know, uh, you, you know, know uh, again, like, sorry to, you know, really de- derail the show, but like, but, but, but abuse can take many forms. You know what I mean? Abuse can take many forms. Like somebody who, you know, a situation like sounds like what you're describing, like somebody who is, um, you know, maybe physically smaller than somebody can still like abuse, you know, uh, uh, mentally abuse somebody who's physically you know, much bigger and stronger than them. Right. And, Mm -hmm. the and, and the problem with doing that to people, and I say this all the time, like, you know, people, people, a lot of times like, uh, like to look at people who are like victims of abuse and just kind of like below them, like, why are you letting somebody treat you like that? Uh." But like, I think the thing that people fail to like recognize and respect a lot of times is you got to understand that for 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 every time that person like swallows their pride and allows themselves to be abused they are they are rejecting the urge to fight and and that could again depending on 
who's the abused and who's the abuser that can look a lot of different ways. Okay. Now, if you have a situation where, again, like, let's just say that it's, you know, a, a, a man and he feels like he's being abused, you know, like maybe verbally berated, you know, mentally, emotionally, like dragged down by, you know, his, his significant other. And then let's just say he snaps, like let's say one day he decides not to, um, not to fight the urge to defend himself. Cause in his mind, he's just defending himself for all of the abuse that he's getting. Right. But in the world, we're like, yo dog, you can't do that. And you can't, you can't. Right. But right. like, you know, but, but that's the effect that, you know, that, you know, uh, abuse has, man, like it takes people out of like their zone. And I think that like, I saw people reporting on the um, Nash Carter, Kimberly story and a lot of her public tweets, like they didn't, you know, necessarily, she was <clears throat> inconsistent in her messaging. Yeah, right. I saw that. And, 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 and obviously that doesn't make her look good. And I think that, you know, you have to be careful when you're reporting on those things, right? Because yes, it doesn't make her look good, but that doesn't mean that what she said happened didn't happen. You know right, what I'm right. saying? I, I believe, I, be, I believe her personally. Yeah. I'm just saying that you know, oftentimes when they're like, oh, well, this, you know, there was abuse. We picture this, What, you know, sometimes it is the case, but some, we always picture the woman being this meek little like, oh, don't, don't do this, yeah. you know, when, um, and again, I do believe her, but um, everyone has a breaking point and yep. Yep. Uh, I'm not blaming her either. That's not what I'm saying. My whole point is sometimes two people are so toxic yep. that it just doesn't end well. You put mm -hmm. one's fire, one's gasoline, man. And it just, you know, and I, I mean, yeah. I, I just like I said, I know people have like gone through that and then they move on to the next relationship and they're fine. Cause they're in a healthy relationship. Right. You know? So I'm just saying, I, I want what's best for both of them in, in a healthy way. Yeah, you know, yeah. if it means I'm splitting and, you know, going their separate yeah, ways and absolutely. doing what's best for them mentally. You know, yeah. and I, listen, I, I hope this conversation, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this conversation hits homes for somebody and, you know, maybe, um, you know, what we're talking about here is something that, you know, will help somebody pull themselves out of a, con a situation before it becomes, you know, violent or fatal or anything, you know what I mean? So um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, obviously we have respect for, um, for the situation and we try to talk about it with some level of sensitivity um and perspective you know what i mean and perspective like you know i i think bq shared um a, pr a perspective that you know a lot of people don't usually think of right they don't think of like a man who felt abused until he lashed out um and then you know he became an abuser right like right that, that's what i was getting at yeah hurt people hurt people you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Um, and like, um, yeah, man, like, so, you know, hopefully, hopefully that conversation hit home for somebody, but let's get back to this wrestling, all yeah, right, let's, do let's get back to this wrestling. So it's every man for himself as Trey Miguel put the X division title on the line against Mike Bailey and Ace Austin in a triple threat match. Miguel and Bailey take turns dishing out punishment to Ace Austin in the early going. Austin trips up Bailey on a handspring attempt, but Miguel makes him pay with an explosive dive to the floor. Miguel holds Austin as Bailey takes advantage of it with a springboard moonsault. Miguel avoids the Ultimo weapon from Bailey and takes out Austin with a sliding cutter to the outside. Bailey soars with a springboard moonsault to Austin. Austin is next to fly as he hits a running Hurricane Rana taking Bailey all the way from the apron to the floor. Bailey connects with the Ultimo weapon on Austin, but Miguel breaks up the pin. Miguel hits Bailey with the Meteora, but Austin pulls the referee out of the ring. Austin spikes Miguel to the floor with the fold and to win the match and become the new three-time X Division champion. And <clears throat> let me just say this. That description did not do justice to how good this match was. <laughs> yeah. This match was bodies flying everywhere for one, but I love the finish. I like how, you know, Ace Austin, you know, he got in and instead of doing like the same sneaky type of finish that Macklin did early on, like he set him up, hit his move to win and the crowd loved it. The crowd was eating it up. And I was like, man, this is, this is good stuff, man. This is good stuff. You know, it's funny because we talk so much about Ace Austin, like, yo, how many times can he be on the verge of being like that next guy? But it feels real right now. You know what I mean? Like the, 
amount of excitement in the crowd as he was in the corner setting up for the fold and he hit it and got the pin. And, you know, of course he's a heel, but, you know, they say that you can only be in front of the audience for so long before they cheer you anyway. People like Ace Austin. People yeah. like Ace Austin because we've been watching him long enough and we know he's talented. And, um, you know, we, 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 we know his act and, and we're with it. Um, that was a good match. It was a great match. Great, great, great match. If you have not seen Impact Rebellion, go find this match. It is worth your time. Go check this match out. It's funny because, like, I watch matches like this and I'm like, dog, if, if this was in AEW, this would be a seven-star match. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. um, I don't, you know, read the Observer or anything like that, but this will probably get three, maybe three and a half, you know what I mean? Because whatever, yeah. it's, it's, it's impact. But um, but this match was fire. This match was fire. Yeah, and, and Ace needed this win. Uh, and this was another one. I didn't feel like people looked weak in the match, you know? usually impact is like, Oh, speedball, Mike Bailey. They kept talking about shiny new objects on this show. Like he's their shiny new object in the X division. So usually they just put the title on that person like ASAP, you know, and they, they fought the urge to do that. And they even tease that he would have lost if, if ACE didn't pull the ref out of the ring. So ACE needed this win. ACE has lost way too many title matches. So he had to win this. Like he, you know, I guess Fulton is gone because he's taken, you know, he posted, I'm taking independent bookings and everything. So, um, good, good for him, dude. Uh, because he, <laughs> he deserves better than, even if he's just on the independent scene. And when's the last time Fulton won a match on Impact TV? Uh, never. Like, I think, right. I think they had him win a couple, uh, you know, enhancement matches. Um, I mean, I, I remember seeing his finisher, so I know he's won, but, they treated him like a joke. Uh, and even if he's never on TV again, he just says indies, man. Like, at least he can go out and do what he deserves. He yeah. should, what he deserve, deserves to do. Like, he should be out there uh, really being a legitimate monster. You know what I mean? Like, this, I, uh, I actually, it actually soured me on Josh Alexander when the way mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, he, they did, they broke his ankle and everything. Like, I, I felt mm -hmm. more sympathy for, uh, Fulton than I did. Oh wow, Josh is a badass. Like interesting. It did more. It did more for Fulton, but I, I also felt that they were writing him out of the company when they did that. But but to go to this match, what I enjoyed about this is that they did a lot. We you know we're both not you know flippy dudes. We don't we don't like the flippy shit. But right. they did shit this match that we would never seen before. That they yeah. did a lot of really original stuff without it yeah. being, you know, they weren't dancing. They weren't doing that. The young bucks, we're all gonna hold hands and we're gonna yes. stupid shit, you know. Um, that that's a, that, you know, that is such a great point. If I just interrupt for like one second, I remember so early in like watching private party wrestle, and the one thing that I just hated was like all the spots you could just see people waiting for. I matter of fact, forget private party. I remember back in the '90s when I used to watch the cruiserweights on WCW and. There would just be these spots where there'd be five guys standing outside the ring. And I'm like, I know somebody's about to die off the top rope. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, but but like you said, this was like it was, it was, it was, it was acrobatic. You know, there was a lot of that stuff, but it wasn't like it didn't feel like ballet. You know right, what I mean? Right. It felt like people were doing offensive maneuvers to hurt people, mm -hmm. but in the most like video game acrobatic way you could actually you know you could you could actually see like it still looked like wrestling but it was just it was to me this was this was moi. this was like the pinnacle of this type of style you know what i mean like yeah, it, this, so often uh, it just looks like 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 chore choreography you know what i mean and this right. looked like wrestling like i remember watching the young bucks versus the lucha brothers that cage match and they did literal dosi -si dos you know like stu i mean it was just so rehearsed and like this clearly they rehearsed the stuff but i mean they made it look like they came up with it on the fly yeah. you know right right they weren't standing in in spots and helping each other out and and um you know but but a lot of it was original just stuff we hadn't seen before 
I was worried that the, that this was going to end the same exact way the other triple threat did. Right. Uh, but they, you know, they did a little different. Ace pulled him out of the ring. So the, it was fun, man. This was, there was, there was times I'm like yelling at the screen. Like just, just <laughs> I would just pop like how cool some of the stuff was that we're doing. So um, it was crazy. Cause this was almost on the pre-show. Right. And right. I mean, I guess technically the pre-show probably gets more eyes. I don't know. The pre-show had like 17,000 views this, as of this morning on YouTube. So I don't think it was... I, I, I never understood the pre-show thing. I don't understand if like it's helpful or hurtful towards people actually... Not hurtful, but I don't know if it actually helps people purchase. I don't think that many people are like, okay, I'm going to watch these two matches. Now I'm going to purchase the show. Like They're either... Yeah. Are or you're not? I don't know. So you know I, I don't what? know how much that helps. I, but. I think I think it's one of those things. It's like, it's like in politics, right? Like, like ninety percent of the people know who they're going to vote for before they hear anything, right? But like, there are those. Let's just say ten percent that is truly on the fence. You know what I mean? And I think that and 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 listen, you never know if it's a tight race. That ten percent could sway the election. You know what yeah. I mean? And so same thing here. I think that like. You know, 90% of people know whether or not they're going to buy. I say 98% of people know whether or not they're going to buy the show or not. But for that 2% of people that is like, yeah, I'm just on YouTube right now. Oh, let me see. Impact got something live up. Let me check this out. Oh, this is a pay-per-view tonight? And by the way, that's a real thing with Impact. Like, I remember there was... um. <laughs> yeah. There was um there was an impact show, maybe it was like Slam Anniversary, but it was one of those where it was one of the more popular ones, and a lot of people were tweeting about it. And I remember seeing like some people who are in the you know in like the 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 wrestling you know Twitter conversation, and they're like, Is there a show tonight? You know what I mean? Because right. it's just it's impact, you know what I mean? It's, it's impact, and um, that's a whole nother conversation that we've talked about and could talk about more. But they used to um, do the when they used to do the one night onlys, like they would just appear out of the blue before Scott came on and they right. started being part of the show just out of the blue like oh here's one night only grab ass whatever and it would <laughs> out of the blue like you're like oh shit there's a show coming okay right but yeah <laughs> the one night only grab ass who was on that show was it grab ass Re <laughs> rebel grab ass competition rebel yeah. and it's Allison K who else? <laughs> 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 was might have been on that show <laughs> Marty Bell. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, so we had next up, we had Jonah versus Tomohiro Ishii. Um, so, all right, all right, all right. This Here's is when things went downhill for me. Yeah, right. I, I, I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, all right, so this match ended with, uh, you know, Jonah speared Ishii, uh, but crashed and burned when he went for the tsunami splash to follow it up. Then... Uh, Ishii got Jonah up for the brain buster and a win. One thing I, I thought was actually really cool, the pacing of this match, it built to a brain buster. And I was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the way they the, the way that they paced this match so that a brain buster was like the climax of the match. It, again, in a in in a world in the state of wrestling where we just see people doing all the flips and dives and spears and everything crazy. Um, to build to a brain buster as a finish, I thought was like pretty cool. That was like, you know, one of those art of wrestling things. Um, I thought it was interesting here to beat Jonah. Um, and it, because Jonah has been killing people and he's been a lot of fun to watch. And if you were going to beat Jonah, it should have been somebody who has a future with impact. It yeah. Been somebody like transfer that credibility onto somebody who's going to be on impact TV. You know what I mean? Do you know who would have been a good candidate to beat Jonah? Chris Who? Bay, Chris <laughs> Bay, right? Like even if you did something no, they, dirty, they where, the, where the Bullet Club, you know, was the was the cause of him beating him. Like, do something with somebody who's going to be on Impact going forward. But you had Jonah out here killing people, and then okay, Ishii's going to beat him. Why? So he can go wrestle Adam Cole? Like, yeah. what? And he like, beat Eddie Edwards before this. What was the point? What was the point of all of that? You know what I mean? Like, so it. It's almost like all of that, you know, like, I, like, like all of that credibility that you built up for Jonah is like it's gone now. It's gone because Jonah's going to be gone, I believe, right? And now Ishi, like, who gives a shit? Right. About Ishii? Like, did did the match with Adam Cole happen this past Friday, or is it next? Is it coming up? 
I feel no, like I think that's that's one of those they announced for the pay per view. Oh, okay. I thought they said it was on a like uh, rampage or something. That's but, possible too. I might have be totally wrong. About so that. I don't know if the match happened. I'll just put it like that. I didn't watch this past rampage. Um, Adam Cole's gonna beat him. Like just right. throw that out there right now. <laughs> right. So right. So he's this dude that's built like a eleven year old girl is <laughs> likely gonna beat. I, I'm I'm. I know he's going to beat him. I'm not even likely. He's going to beat him. This fool just came on Impact and beat, you know, two of the top guys. Which Jonah, I don't know. We don't think he's really part of the company. He just, you know, whatever. I don't know. I but know, the I, point is that he he did, he did was great, like, while he was on Impact, you know? Like, yeah. he was really great on Impact. Like, he was on Impact looking like he should have been a title contender. Yes. Absolutely. So, all right. So, all right. So, yeah, that was just that this, was a head scratching booking decision for me. Yeah, this was like, just a match. This was this was like trying to be do the AW thing where we're just going to give you like this good match. I mean, right. I didn't give a shit, dude. I just I was for the most part pretty bored watching this. I'm not saying it was bad. It wasn't. I just I'm not into that style of wrestling. Yeah. So I just I don't watch New Japan. I've watched I watch it for a collective six months in my life. Um, right. I, I don't really care for it. Um I just don't understand. Ishii is supposed to be around for the set of taping, so right, he's gonna do something. Uh, he's not gonna cut a promo, so I don't know what kind of program um, they're gonna have him in. But you, know. no, you don't understand. It's cool. It's cool, BQ. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. It's for the hardcores. All right. Um, <laughs> so Violent by Design defended the Impact World Tag Team Titles in an eight-team elimination challenge. Violent by Design. Okay, so we started this off. This was basically a gauntlet match, people. Um, with the, the first team out was the major players, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers with Chelsea Green uh, versus Jordan Grace, and her partner was W. Morrissey. All right, so this was actually fun. I thought this was a fun, hot start to the match. Um, so the match, the whole thing was fun because it wasn't, but this first, the beginning, right. yes. Okay. Exactly. This was, a, this was a fun way to start off. Um Jordan Grace uh, got rolled up by Matt Cardona to eliminate Grace and Morrissey. Uh, then after the after that, um, Chelsea Green goes outside the ring and starts just slapping the shit out of W. Morrissey. And so we kind of knew what was coming. Um, he powerbombed her through a table. But in powerbombing her through a table, he got two handfuls of her prized oh, possessions. He sure did. And I was like, bro, like, so, so I, okay, like, I don't know. I, I just, for me, that was like a little weird. I'm not trying to like raise any unnecessary red flags here or anything like that, but I'm like, dog, he's a, Morrissey's a professional. Like he's a professional. Yeah. You, I've never seen him power bomb anybody like this. Grab t- grabbing titty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you mean to tell me he couldn't have done that without getting two handfuls of her breast, bro. Yeah. Like, like I was just, t- I don't, I don't know. That was just like that was that that felt a little weird to me. Like, you know, and, and I'm just curious, like, if you're Matt Cardona, does, like, is that a conversation backstage? You know what I mean? Like, is it if he it I, I again, again, because I'm like, it's wrestling, right? Like it, the part of putting your hands in weird play, wrestling is that that's just part of the deal, right? Like you when you gotta scoop somebody up for a slam, like part of it is you gotta put your hands in weird places, but again, like. I don't know. I don't know. Like, like you're going to tell me you couldn't get her up for a power bomb without getting two hands full of her breast. Like, yeah, I, I'm just saying like that did not look accidental. That didn't look accidental. I, I mean, even if it was, I, even if you are doing it and you're like, Oh shit, that's two titties in my hand. Let me just, yeah, yeah. Let me move my hand down to right underneath her boobs. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm just saying I, to me, that did anybody else know? Because I, I was I was scanning the timeline after this happened. And I didn't see anybody talking about. It. I didn't see anybody <laughs> tweeting about this. And I just thought that was like weird. I was like, y'all just gonna let that slide? Like y'all, nobody's gonna say nothing? Like my man just just caught a mean feel on the on the power bomb spot? Like I don't, I don't know. That was and she's a tall weird. girl too, so it's not like right. She's she power bombing Alicia Edwards. She has mid- right. If you're power bombing Alicia Edwards, like there's only so much body there. Okay, so yeah. if your hands end up somewhere where they're not supposed to, it's more understandable, right? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Chelsea Green has midsection. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, 
I, she has I more know, torso. Was, yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I just thought that was weird. So I'm just I'm curious, man. Like I and I I can't like press this conversation on Twitter, but I want to know like if you're Matt Cardona, are you saying something backstage? Like, are you like bro? You, you yeah. Like, did she say something to him? You know what I mean? Like after the power bomb was because he's gonna see this on tape. You know, now if if she didn't say something to him, we're completely derailing this because this, this match, who gave a shit about this match? But like <laughs> this, this is the real interesting thing coming out of this match, okay? Yeah. It, if you're Chelsea Green, and let's say you're just trying to no sell it, as they tell women to do in wrestling throughout history, they're like, okay, listen, a man does some bullshit to you, no sell it. Just you don't you don't want to be a problem. You know, we don't want them thinking we can't have women around because women don't know how to act if you're not just just going along with just what the boys are doing, right? So like a lot of women are told to no sell it. Go watch Dark Side of the Ring. You'll you'll Yeah, yeah. You'll, I know. You'll, <laughs> exactly a lot of women are just about. told to no sell it when you know they encounter some bullshit on uh in in a potential situation like that so let's say she was no selling it if you're matt cardona and you're watching the match back you not gonna be looking funny when you see like that finish you're gonna be like dog you didn't feel his hands like all over (laughs) (laughs) i mean and so does he say something to her and then does she does he say something to him? Like, I'm just curious. I just want to know. I want to know how that's handled because again, we're all professionals here, right? And is it professional for W. Morrissey to, you know, again, once you recognize, <laughs> there's no way. There's no way you didn't recognize where your hands were at no point in that move. Because it, it wasn't like a quick, let me lift you up and power bomb. He lifted her up turned around then power bombed her like he yeah knew in his hands he knew what was in his hands i just listen drop drop down in the comments below am i tripping <laughs> am i tripping drop comments in the, drop the comments down below tell me if i'm tripping did w morrissey get his money's worth okay oh my gosh <laughs> and so- if, if you and if you were matt cardona are you stepping to W. Morrissey backstage? Drop in the comments below and let me know. Because I feel like that's got to be a conversation. So I got a rant here about the major players, Morrissey, this whole story. So a couple of weeks ago, they do the, you can call it a debut, whatever, the major players. They, you know, they, uh, they form before our eyes on the show, attack Morrissey, they attack Mickey James backstage. They came off like, yo, this is going to be a really entertaining part of, of the show. Like, they're going to be uh, potentially what the coolness that we thought Honor No More was going to be. It, ju- it just felt interesting. We knew that Mark Cardona was capable of a lot as a heel. Him and Chelsea got that turn. Uh, we've liked Brian Myers, so we put them together. Oh, man, we're going to get something real cool. So they, they, they attack these guys. The next week... Cardona, the NWA champion, is going through a table. Like, Morrissey is getting his comeuppance the next week? You know, they should they, they should have had left Morrissey on his ass, dude. Like, what was the point of Morrissey getting comeuppance the, the very next week? Jordan Grace comes down freaking randomly, helps him get that comeuppance, and they're, they're raising their hands and rah-rah, every, everything's good. Why? Why are they already, like, knocked on their ass? Like, so far, the major players has taken Brian Myers out of the comedy role, but it seems like it's weakening Cardona, which, which is weird. Like, he's the last person that should have went through a table there. Um, he's a, he has an impact championship. That means nothing, but he's also an NWA champion, so it's just very weird to me. And then we have this match. The major players come out first. These motherfuckers should have won the match. Like, I felt they should have been, like, no doubt in my mind, the tag team champions. Um, that's who I picked to win. And then they came out first. I was like, okay. And then when Jordan Grace came out there, I was like, oh my God, they're really going to do this now. And this is what bothered, this, this is what bothered me. And it's, it's shocking to me that this is, didn't cross anyone's mind. Last week on the show, they should have just left, left Morrissey laying there. There was no reason to bring Jordan Grace. 
Now, on the pay-per-view, when Jordan Grace's music hit, and people would have been like, oh, shit, what the hell is she doing in this match? And then Morrissey's music hits, it would have been a complete shocker. Instead, like, we knew exactly what was going on, and they just continue to get more comeuppance. I mean, I know, I know the major players won the match, but then these motherfuckers laid him out after the match again. Yeah, obviously, you know, there's the Chelsea thing. We were just talking about that. But, I mean, they took him out, and then they stayed in the match. They easily could have just got themselves counted out, or they just maybe there's no countouts. They could have just left and protected themselves. Instead, they stayed and looked like even bigger fools and lost to the Good Brothers, another heel team. So the whole beginning of this was like, it was cool to me, but then all of a sudden I got really annoyed with it. And I just, I feel like it was a really missed opportunity for just a little bit of, little bit of shock factor to just have Jordan Grace randomly come out who hadn't been on TV in weeks, just have her come out and then Morrissey's music hit. All of a sudden, whoa, you know, like the commentators were like, oh my God, like, dude, you knew exactly who the hell was coming out. Um, so I don't know. I don't want them to drop the ball on this major players thing because I think it can be really, really good. But right now they're looking like fools very early. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. I think there's still some, um, I, I, I think there's definitely still some legs to this. Um, I would say, you know, again, like it depends on, okay. So impact, we got, we got, Maybe when we're all done with this, we'll talk Impact Wrestling Direction af- after this is all over, and, we're, and we'll we'll come back to this. Um, but I think that like that's just the biggest question that I think you know Impact needs to answer. I think that in terms of like the overall booking of this, right? There was a big influx of talent, kind of all at once in Impact, right? You know what I mean? Like the Bullet Club seemed to kind of come out of nowhere. I don't know more. Like just all these people kind of became available what seemed to be unexpectedly right and now you had you got all this talent with some name recognition on the show and you got to find a way to use them and that kind of flies in the face of what impact has done so strongly which is tell good stories tell good stories and build talent right those are the two things that impact has done really strongly over the last you know three four years and so you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I I don't say don't use the talent you have that people know, because I guarantee you there's been a bump from people wanting to see what, you know, the Ring of Honor people are up to. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know. But I think, again, like <clears throat> maybe when we finish all this, we'll talk. When we finish reviewing the show. We'll talk overall direction of the company. And I think that that's certainly, you know, not only a fair question to ask, but I think like it's it's something I want to know, you know? So uh, we're not going to go like play by play through this tag team um, gauntlet thing. Honestly, after that first part, it really kind of This was horrible. And um, And the Good Brothers, man, this is the shit when I said they're leaning into the cool heel thing. You got like really the only baby face tag team in this match that is over, you could say. I I don't know my opinion. Swan and Max should have been champions a long time ago. They're in there. They're getting their ass whooped. And the Good Brothers are, you know, starting chants and all this shit with the people. Like, I fucking hate them so much, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. I hate the Bullet Club, dude. Um, I like individual members of it. But, like, the whole idea of it, I can't freaking stand, dude. Yeah, I just, it was, uh, it just so bothered me. Willie, uh, I think it was Rich Swan was on the ground. And this dude's starting chants with the crowd. I mean, yeah. Um, um but this match this fucking right. match sucked. This whole freaking thing. I'm sorry. I hated this. All, all this just to That's how you really feel. <laughs> all this just to put the titles on Heath and Rhino. Granted, Violent by Design won. Heath and Rhino are gonna take the titles off them. So we're gonna get this feud again that freaking no one cared about the first time, and they kept wrestling each other when it was like, Oh my god, are you done? And now they're going to do it all over again. And then I, I just, I didn't, oh my God. I didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, totally agree, man. I think that like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like this is the, 
<clears throat> when they got down to Heath and Rhino versus Violent by Design, I was cringing because I was like, oh, God, are they going to win? Yeah. And, and I was just like, because again, it just leaves me asking the question of like, what are, what, what is Impact doing? Where is it going? Like, how does this benefit me as a viewer? And um, I was happy that Violent by Design won because I'd rather see them with the titles than Heath and Rhino because I don't find anything interesting or really funny about Heath and Rhino. I just, I don't. <laughs> um, Not so, at all. Um, yeah. Vi- we Violent by Design, we always felt like that they've had the titles a couple of times. They were just like transitional champions, but then they end up winning. They end up winning these matches. So I mean, good for yeah, them. Yeah. They're trying to add some legitimacy to them, you know, yeah, as yeah. champions or whatever. So you know, that's all good. But I just, I, I didn't, I wasn't having fun watching this match. Yeah, like yeah. Swinger and and Zicky Dice came out and all that. I'm just like, yeah. Ugh. Uh. Um, all right, so up next, we had the Knockouts Championship match, uh, Tasha Stills versus Rosemary. This was, uh, it was okay, man. Listen, Tasha Stills needs some good, she needs some good matches under her belt. I think that, like, maybe through no fault of her own, Tasha Stills has felt kind of cold coming into this. Um, yeah. Mickey James has been so good that she's cast a little bit of a shadow over the knockouts division. And like, I think we've been kind of looking forward to what's next from like, you know, the Mickey James, Chelsea green story. There was like a lot of build to that. So we got to this show and there was no Mickey James and, um, you know, Tasha Stills is going to have to find her fire back. Um, she's going to have to find her fire back because Tasha Stills is great. Um, but again, a lot of the story has been what's going on with Mickey James. And so, like, so we got Tasha Stills, who's the champion, uh, versus Rosemary, who really doesn't have a, a whole lot of uh, steam or momentum built up coming into this match. And so, like, you know, where's the story, right? Where's the story? Um, yeah. You know, Tasha Stills, she, you know, she won with a uh, a cutter followed by some sort of like driver situation, and um, it was a, yeah. it was a horrible Falcon Arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I remember seeing that and going like, man, like, you know, I don't know if Tasha Stills is like strong enough to be doing that move. Like maybe she needs to, you know, switch it up and find something else. There's like, she has this, this like crucifix bomb pin. And unless you get the timing of it, it's one of those moves, like the Canadian destroyer slash tequila sunrise slash whatever, where unless you get the timing right, it looks like crap. It looks like fake wrestling. And I hate that. I hate that. Like, we all know wrestling is a show, but, like, the moves don't have to look like we're just playing along. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah, like, you know, so anyway, so uh, she needs a better finisher. She needs a better finisher. Well, she um, uses a, a few finishers because she uses the frog splash, which true. doesn't look good. Uh, the crucifix bomb, the blackout, which I, I've, I like the move. Um, and then I don't know if she added this falcon arrow. I appreciate any wrestler who has multiple finishers. I agree with that. Because because then you don't know when they're like wh- that's why I enjoy Deanna Perrazzo's matches because she might make them tap or she might hit the uh, Queen's Gambit but when when you just have that one move and you're just like you just know that's the only match the move they're gonna fucking win with like it's just not as entertaining as like yeah. you know like Brian Danielson uh, has like three or four and he purposely did that when he came to AW he won his first like four matches with different moves and I'm like so when he wrestles. Uh, in WWE, I used to hate him. You know, they used to say, "Oh, the submission specialist," but he had one submission move, the yes lock. Right. Uh, when he was in the NXT, the the competition, he used to do all these really cool submissions, like Zack Saber Jr. And then once he went to the ro- main roster, he just had one move. You know, and I remember watching him, and I'm just like, dude, it's the same finish. You know, um, so any wrestler who can bust out various finishes, I can get behind him, but. This this match, the crowd was dead from the tag team match. Yeah, that whole shit storm we went through only had one good tag team match in it, and that was the uh, Willie Mack and Swan versus the Good Brothers. That was the only competitive, like, I guess you could say the Violent by Design Heath and Rhino, but I don't mm-hmm. think the crowd really cared. Um, but that that tag team match completely took them out of it. They get to this, they're dead for this match, dude. Um, Rosemary's always over, so you know she's gonna get a reaction. But 
you know, Tasha Steele has had three matches since being the champion. She's lost all three. Granted, she there weren't one on one matches, but she got pinned in a tag team match. She, uh, you know, lost. Uh, you know, granted she they she wasn't pinned again, but her team still lost the knockouts four team match. And then uh, there was something else she did too, where the, um, where she lost also. And it's just like, okay, dude. And then Rosemary ain't, ain't beat nobody. She wins this battle royal. Remember, we talked about who the hell is going to fight Tasha Steeles next, and I was like, well, I guess you could heat up Rosemary real quick, and that's exactly what they did. It was just um, the crowd knew that this match was bullshit. When I say bullshit, everybody knew Rosemary wasn't going to win. Everyone knew that Tasha Steeles just needed an opponent, and so that's what this was. And they made it the semi-main, and they gave it the big, you know, and uh, you know, uh, not entrance, but the 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 uh, ring announcement announcements at the beginning, everything they made it try to f- seem like a big deal, but it's just like yo, no one cares about this match because they haven't given us a reason to care on TV. They had Tasha Steele's attack Rosemary to wheel in the night last week, like that was that's pretty much it. You know, a couple weird promos, um, and I don't know, man. Rosemary's just not clicking the way she used to, dude. It's I don't know what it is. I don't know, like something's like missing that. The the aura is not, yeah. I don't I don't know. It, it, it's weird, but um, Rosemary's always over. But the crowd, they were exhausted from that tag team match, and they just didn't enjoy this. You could hear that they they didn't enjoy it. And I tweeted out two or three days ago. I said all three title matches have the potential to end with the spear. And you know I'm always talking about the damn spear and the finishers. And then I I told uh. My buddy Mike, I said there is zero percent chance that they protect the spear for Moose in the in the main event. Right. And sure enough, Rhino and th- these matches were in a row, the three matches in a row. <laughs> so Rhino hits the spear, gets a win. Rosemary hits the spear. Tasha Steeles kicks out of it. So, you, you know, someone like Jim Cornette, who I'm always saying I listen to for entertainment, he would have lost his mind if he saw someone kick out of the spear, knowing <laughs> Moose needed it in the next match. And then Moose hits the spear in his match. Josh Alexander kicks out of it. And like, no one's ever kicked out of the of that. Granted, they haven't done it when Moose is. They haven't kicked out of Moose is, but they just kicked out of a spear about 15 minutes ago. So, oh my God! Uh, the, yeah. You know, listen, man. Hey, this is this is the product we love. Yeah. Um, all right. So it was time for the main event. It was time for the main event, and um, you know, the story was great. The stage was set, and this felt like a big-time main event. This felt like a big-time main event, and I was of the mindset coming into this match that there should be another sort of screw job for Josh Alexander. Um, they, I thought they should have taken the turn where we find out that Scott Demore was the one placing all the obstacles in his way, um, and, you know, he's, you know, somehow protecting Moose, and just push this story out even farther because I I was watching busted open. Uh, I was listening to the busted open podcast and Tommy dreamer was talking to Josh Alexander. One of the questions that he asked him was like, you know, when you're getting that reception from the crowd, like, does it feel real? Do you feel like a star? And I'll sit here saying like, yo, that's my number one problem. When I see Josh Alexander come out is there's no pop. There's no the pop. Music. I noticed. Yeah. The, the music hits and there's no pop. And for the story they have told with this guy, like they've done that right. They've gotten that piece right. The story has been good. Excellent. The story's been good. He's He has all the reason, all the motivation. If you're a viewer at home, you are on this guy's side. He yeah. needs to get vengeance for what Moose has done to him and his family and make it right. But still, when the music hits, like, I just, I don't, I don't hear that pop, man. I don't. And we know we're wrestling fans. We know what a pop is. Okay. We know what a pop is. There's applause, but it's not like, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not natural to just to, to act like that to a bunch of ominous tones on a keyboard. Like it's just, you know, there's no energy to the song. So you do, you, the people are not pumped up for them. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. I think that's a great point. That's a great point. So like, again, you know, and, and, and so, you know, Josh Alexander comes out, you know, everyone's excited. We know we're here for, for his night or whatever, or, or the culmination of his story. 
And this match absolutely 100% delivered. 100% this match delivered. And I liked how the way the match started was just Josh Alexander whooping Moose's ass, like, all over. And I'm like, dog, this is perfect. But with wrestling moves. Like, he was purposely didn't want to show anger, so he was just doing wrestling moves. Right. Like, he was wrestling a jobber. Right. And like, and, and once they once they settled down, like past the initial stuff, it was like, yo, jo- no, Josh is just whooping this guy. all over. like he's he's taking out like he's doing what he said he was going to do. I'm making you pay for what you did to me. Like, this is not just like a wrestling match. Like, this is personal. And it was just so good. And then this match had like layers, layers, and stages. And I was like, oh, my God, this is just so good. It was you masterful. Know, it, yo, it really, really was. And again, if anybody did not see this match, this match is worth going out of your way to find a way to watch. This match was a, a classic. I, it was so good. It was so good. So um, Again, Dave Meltzer probably gave it half a star. But yeah, um, <laughs> but it was good, man. It was good. I mean, like, y'all can drop your comments below and tell us what you thought of the match. But I thought this was phenomenal. This was the best Moose match I've ever seen. Um, this, this, this. I don't know if it was the best Josh Alexander match I've ever seen, but it's definitely one of, and we're talking about somebody who put on a phenomenal run of matches last year. Um, and this was so good. This was so good. And it was the finish that we should have gotten. You know, it was, it was the finish that, that we should have gotten. Josh Alexander won. It was satisfying. Celebrates with the wife and kids as the show goes off the air. What was you going to say? We, we, we actually got to take it back to earlier in the show where, it actually had Josh with uh with Jade and his son, and mm-hmm. then right when Scott came out, I was like, "Here we fucking go, dude!" <laughs> but he was talking normal instead of the Josh, you know, like he was, <laughs> he was talking normal to him. But this is a part of the story, like like he said, you said you wanted your coach, not your boss. Yeah. And then he 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 laid out the story there, like, you know, you can't let your emotions get the be- best of you. You have to take from him what is most important to him uh, because he's trying to affect what's most important to you. Like he gave legitimate advice and that started the story. So then when the match happens, it's like, you know, Josh was going to run and attack him and then he just stopped and they did a collarable tie up, whatever. And he's, he's just like, you know, the story was like, I'm not going to let my mind get the best of me. And, and you know, he was just out wrestling. him. like, like I said, like he, how like he would wrestle a jobber, but what I mean is, like, he approached it like the story is almost like he approached it in the beginning, like he was just wrestling a match. They gave him, like, he got to work that night. They're like, hey, dude, you're wrestling John Schuyler tonight. And he went out there and just wrestled him. You, you know what right. I mean? And, um, but yeah, there, there was just so many layers to it. And uh, I, I keep dropping Cornette, man. So I'm listening to him the other day or name dropping him. I'm listening to him the other day and he goes, well, I guess we're going to have to start watching impact now because the, if the Briscoes are going to be on there, cause he loves the Briscoes, you know, and his uh, co-host Brian last is like, Oh hell no. Like I'm not that desperate, you know? Right. <laughs> and it's so frustrating dude, because I listen to the reviews they do of NXT also. I don't, I, I watch NXT maybe like once a month, but I still listen to the reviews. They hate almost everything on NXT and AEW. And the stuff that they're just like, this makes no sense, and this and this, Impact doesn't have those problems. The things that they want to see from these shows, Impact does. That and that's what like is so frustrating to me that guys like these, they're influencers to the wrestling community, but they paint this picture like, dude, I'm that's a waste of my time. I'm not gonna watch that. I mean, they they say that like that, you know, this dude straight up said, oh, I. No, I'm not that desperate. I'm not going to watch that. They're uh, in- inconsequential, you know, they're irrelevant. You know, but they're doing these really good things and it's it's kind of like, you know, there's a, if a tree falls in the woods is any, you know, anybody hear it, however that <laughs> that phrase goes, but um so I'm worried the wrestling community is not going to get to really understand how important this i mean how good this match was but also if you didn't know the story leading up to it i mean i don't know how i would i would look at this match if i didn't know the story you know if i was just watching it i might have been like this is boring i, I don't know Interesting. but but you ha- you need it in context you need to know the story 
and understand the story being told, the storyline that is, and then understand the story being told in the match. You know, I think that's a fair point. I think that's a fair point. You know, like if, if you had no knowledge of the story, you know, how would you be looking at the match? But for me, like, I don't really, I don't really watch matches like that. Like I actually really hate watching matches. I struggle to watch matches where there's no story, where I'm not invested in a story in any way. So like, I don't know. It's, that's like, uh, that's almost like a, like a, like a, like a moot point. Like to me, like knowing the story is a big part of what made it so good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like knowing the story and, and wondering where the story is going, right? Like, where is it going to pivot? Is there going to be a screw job? Is there another layer to Josh, you know, uh, to, to Josh having to chase and get this title? Is Moose going to find some sort of underhanded way to, to, to get the title? So, like, I mean, I don't know. The story is a big deal. Like, I, I can't separate the story from the match. Like, I mean, that's just for me because, like, and don't get me wrong, a lot of people can and do and a lot of people like again I, I i get this with people all the time right like the a lot of the current generation of, of of new wrestling fans that are into the flippy dippy as we say right like they just they just want the action but for me i'm like the action should be for a reason but there should be a reason you're doing that flip dive triple explode into flames move like whatever Right. Like, so for me, I don't know. I can't really separate them. Um, And the fact that the story was what it was is the reason why the moves made sense. Right. So, yeah. Call me crazy. (laughs) Um, But so. All right. So. So Rebellion was in the books. And so for me, I mentioned throughout this review a couple of times that there were a couple of what I thought were questionable booking decisions like, you know, Eddie Edwards over Chris Bay and uh jonah losing to ishii that that type of thing um where do you see give me just just coming out of this if you got some guesses for where things are going forward um and then i got one more question after that so i'm actually really confused on what's going on but that's not necessarily a bad thing because i hate super predictable storylines but it is a bad thing at the same time because I think it's really jumbled right now. And I used PCO and Jonah as an example earlier. So there. Oh, so let me throw this out there. Shout out to Pat. He told me this. He was at the tapings. He said, as someone at the set of tapings, you had no clue what the build to Rebellion was. You had no clue what matches were at Rebellion. Obviously, there was a couple. They had a name drop a little bit here and there. But I don't know that... When Rosemary had when they had that battle royal, I don't know that they said it was a number one contenders battle royal. Like they always be like this special match, you know. But he said watching it, he had no clue what the build was to Rebellion, and um, that's how. It, and you could tell when Jonah wrestled PCO the other day, people were cheering. They started off like "Let's go, Jonah," and then it was like, "Wait, is he?" the bad guy and then all of a sudden they they switched to booing i i I heard this on on tv like they started cheering and all of a sudden and they were booing pco and then they switched because they didn't know who the frick was who and um i don't know if they're just leaning too much into the tweener thing right now but they're doing a lot of heel versus heel shit and i don't know who's good and who's bad i don't know like the honor no more thing just should feel you should be like dude what's next for them who the fuck cares dude the who, they are not interesting anymore and i i just got i've got this weird feeling that Eddie Edwards is going to have that match with Jonathan Gresham eventually he's going to lose they're going to shake hands and he's going to go back to being a baby face and honor no more is going to jump him and all that crap and then they're going to go try to join the new ring of honor or something like that like I just don't feel that Eddie Edwards' heel thing is going to last long. I don't see why it would, because if the Honor No More thing fizzles out, like, what's he... That's the gimmick. That's the gimmick of why he's a heel. So, I don't know what they're doing to Honor No More. I don't know what they're doing with Eddie Edwards. Like, the Bullet Club, 
they just mess it all up because they're heels that are trying to get over like baby faces. Um, you, you would think Eddie and the Eddie and Josh angle is coming next, but I don't really know. And then you got Tasha Steeles, who they're probably gonna have to bring Mickey James back to do something with her. I don't, I don't, I don't know who the hell else. No one is 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 really built up. Right. Um, and then you, I mean, you they got a couple new knockouts in Giselle and um, and Lady Frost, but they kind of teased they might be going after the tag team titles. And the two of them, they have them on this like equal path. They're they're right. they're. 50-50 booking wrestling each other and then they're teaming together and then they're in a triple threat match together. Well, that's basically like the Rock and Stone Cold if you remember. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I just mean they're not e- e- elevating either of the two above each other. They're they're at a complete uh, standstill. Um, and then I don't know, like, is Alicia going to be part of this honor no more? So, like, at first it was interesting, like, oh, is she going to join Eddie? Like, now who cares? Nobody cares. You, you know what I mean? Because the Honor No More stuff isn't that good anymore. And maybe it's because the Ring of Honor thing threw a wrench in it. That could possibly be what it is. But um, mm-hmm. And then we know we got the Briscoes coming. Who the hell, who are they going to fight? You know. Oh, yeah, I expected to see them at the, the pay-per-view. Yeah. I guess they don't want to waste them in that, that crap match. They, dude, sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they were supposed to be in it. And, uh, and, it, and that's probably why they put Zicky Dyson yeah. swinger in there possibility i don't know they i say good move though because they wouldn't have like saved that match no no nobody could have saved that match right they and they deserve a better a bigger something bigger than that like that was just a a throwaway like let's get everyone in the mat on the pay-per-view type of thing so um so yeah i don't think they were supposed to be a part of that but the tag team division is stronger than it's been in a while but it's muddy at the same time like it's yeah you know, it, it's I, I'm I'm interested to see this episode because I don't know I don't know where anything is going. All I can right. say I know for sure is that Heath and Rhino are going to feud with, with Violent by Design because that's always how it works. You have a gauntlet match; whoever is the last two, they're going to feud. Um, <laughs> and yep. then uh, same with the triple threats. When you screw one guy, that means you're the guy who screwed and the guy who got screwed. They're going to feud. <laughs> you know, so. Um, no, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just, I got, I got, actually got rebellion on in the background, and it was just the uh, the power bomb, power bomb yeah. feel up spot again, and I'm like, dog, I just I go go back and watch the spot. Like to me, it does not look like that was unavoidable. I'm sorry, it just does not look like that was unavoidable. Like he had her up, and like I don't know, like when he first picks her up, it looks like she's like checking to make sure she's not falling out. But he very quickly gets his hands up there. And I'm just like, I don't know, dog. It's not like, do you think he heard her say, oh, my, 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 my top? And like, maybe he was trying to cover her. Do you think that's a possibility? I, I do you think he was thinking quickly? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm saying anyway. Okay. Um, so as far as like where, where it's going, spinning forward, I don't know. I also, there's, there's a lot of, I don't know, because like we talked about earlier, a lot of this didn't have a whole lot of basis for booking coming into it. Like, you know, they just threw, you know, the good brothers and I don't know more and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So I'm interested. I am interested to see like, you know, what, where it's going, going forward. Um, Here's what was my, Oh, one, one extra question. Before we get to my final question, there was a little promo for what was it, EGV or EV? Yeah. What What do you think that is? I couldn't so I, tell. Part Part of me at first thought that that might have been um, uh, a promotion for an event where they were like teasing different like people. Like when I saw the um, there was like a an X ray there, and I was like. Is that like teasing? Like, is that, is that like a like a dental X-ray? Is that like a Britt Baker tease? Yeah. But then I watched it. Was, it, it was again. the Chelsea Green X-ray. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I was I was watching it. I was watching it again. I was like, you know what? The only the only pictures here are like male superstars. I was like, so no, that makes me think this is a person, and this shows that like they're targeting these people. So 
I think this is a, a repack, another repackaging for Sammy Callahan. But it is. What, I, I think it. I'm fairly certain it is. I, yeah. I think I saw on Twitter that the little code was something about that. It said Sammy. It was S A M I. So. Uh, so I, yeah, I mean, I, I I can. They're probably gonna do an Eddie Edwards thing where Eddie turned his back on Impact, so now Eddie's the heel, Sammy's the baby face. Like, that's that writes itself. So that's that's most likely gonna be what they do. The EGV, I, it it probably stands. It probably I don't think it's a name. It's probably a whatever his new catchphrase is. Mm-hmm. It could be. Um, I mean, it's it's a hacker thing, so it could be everything goes viral or. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it right there. Everything <laughs> that was it. Yo, oh my God. You hit it right there. I bet you that's what it was. I bet you that's what it was. Everything goes viral. Everything goes yeah. viral. All, all, all my pun people, go ahead and, um, or, or, or pun or acronym, all my acronym people, all my uh, puzzle people out there in the audience, go ahead and drop your thoughts below on what you think egv might actually but say. i also i don't know if that makes sense though i don't think everything goes viral like <laughs> could though but i don't know could. there's a lot of phrases like when the new days like had their booty o cereal make sure you ain't booty like that doesn't make sense I that's eat this true cereal, like the there's no way you can make sure you ain't booty because you could always still be booty yeah because you know you're mean? eating the booty so you could eat the cereal and you could still be booty. Like sometimes just, you know, sometimes you're booty. Um, um, <laughs> so this was my real, my real final question that I had. Uh, if you were a betting man, what? Which I am. <laughs> what's the Slammiversary main event? I would have said it was. Uh, oh, I, I, I actually fairly certain I, I bet it is a triple threat of josh alexander sammy callahan and eddie edwards mm. no it's, i'm trying to think like impact thinks like sammy and eddie should should have a program by themselves but who the hell is josh gonna fight so i i just thinking like the way th- impact thinks and the way they book like that's what i think they're gonna do off the top of my head, that does not sound like something I want to spend my money on. No. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like, but I, I do think it's going to be Eddie Edwards versus Josh Alexander, if I, if I had to guess. I was actually thinking that, even though this feels redundant, that it would be uh, Ace Austin maybe finally cashing in that option C. Maybe that's for Bound for Glory. But um, I feel it's got to be time for Ace Austin, Right? Right? Yeah, like maybe, maybe not slam anniversary, maybe it bound for glory, but like, come on, dog, come on, Ace yeah. Austin, bro. Like, like we say this all the time. Like he's been on the verge a lot, a lot, and it's not that I'm starting to like lose faith in him, like whatever, yada 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 yada. But like at this point, like he's a proven commodity, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like I, I mean, I'm not saying I think that. Like now, here's a listen. This is an interesting thing. That I think we as Impact fans get away from sometime. And I was listening to something earlier today. Oh, it was uh, Eric Bischoff was on the Mac Mania podcast this past week. And, you know, he said something that I think is important to remember, right? Like the main job of the person who you place as your world champion is to attract viewership, attract dollars. You know what I mean? Like that's what it is. That's what the person's supposed to be. And so, um, what is it about Ace Austin that I think is going to do that? I can't say I do think it's going to do that. You know what I mean? And, and what is it I think about Josh Alexander is going to do that? I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I I, I think it's, it's it's very interesting. Um, but getting there is the fun, right? That's why we watch every week. Um, did you have any final thoughts you wanted to drop on this show or this episode of the Cool Factor Pod? Just a solid pay per view. I thought, um, I thought it just took a turn for the worse. With they it started with the gene, uh, the genie. I don't the Jonah and Ishi match. Uh, tag two match was horrible. The, the knockouts match was not that good. Um, but then you know the main event saved it. So I, I really thought it started strong. Even the pre show with the influence and the inspiration, like there was some good stuff. But uh, it wasn't perfect. 
and um, this is not the pay-per-view they usually go all in on. It's usually like a very transitional, like starts the the build to Slammiversary, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like this probably wiped some feuds clean, but I, I don't know. Again, everything's so muddy. I don't know if it's a good muddy or a bad muddy. I don't know if it's like good where they're just trying to, you know, they're going to hit us with these feuds and we're like, okay, cool. Or they don't even know what's going on. I don't, I don't know what's happening, but. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, you know, they'll find a way to, you know, make it interesting, make it fun on, on the journey there. Um, we hope you guys had fun on this journey with us going back and reviewing this, uh, impact pay-per-view impact rebellion. And, you know, if you didn't, please tell us about it in the comments. You know what I mean? Um, you know, BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here in these social media streets. At BQ Speaks on Twitter. Yes. And you can find me at TW talking about on your talk on your uh, social media of choice. You can also follow my uh, podcast page at talking about pod. Uh, got some fun content coming up. Uh, I'm probably going to talk about the uh forbidden door that was one of the biggest stories this past week so this forbidden door pay-per-view is causing a lot of conversation i think i'm gonna get some thoughts on that this week uh on the talking about pod um just uh follow follow the page at talking about pod follow me on twitter at talking about pod follow my youtube channel at talking about pod all right but if you like this if you love this if you enjoy the content that we're giving you again like comment rate and subscribe but the most important thing you can do is tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation for BQ. I'm TW. Peace.